So I'm gonna give it a little taste. Ooh. <laughs> so this recipe is for a three ingredient steak sauce. Three ingredients that you probably have in your pantry right now. I don't know if you can see them, but don't, they're, they're a secret. <laughs> And because it's so easy, I'm also gonna show you my favorite kind of rule-breaking way to make steak. So the first thing that you're gonna notice about this steak sauce is that it has a ton of ground mustard in it. Like, look at, look at all that, it's a quarter cup. And that's what makes it taste like spicy, that like fire I think is like, it's like this carnal thing in all of us that we want. Maybe not all of us, but me and you. <laughs> According to the original recipe author, Roy Yamaguchi, letting this sit for a few minutes will make the mustard flavor come out even more before we add the other two ingredients. I haven't actually tasted that myself yet, but I thought maybe I'd give it a go. <laughs> the soy is bringing the salt and the umami. The seasoned rice vinegar is bringing tang and sweetness, just like in steak sauces that you ha probably have in your cupboard right now. But this way you can fiddle with it if you want. If you want it to be tangier, add a little more of this. If you want it to just be really salty, add a little more of this. And then just whisk it together again. Okay, so now chill it for an, about an hour to let the flavors come together. So actually we happen to have some that our team here put together. Thank you. Wow, so it's it like it settles also a little bit. Um, you know, here you've got this like kind of creamy frothiness on the top, and then as it sits, it it settles a little bit more. And the real test is the taste. Hmm. You get more of the mustard right up front. It's soy mustard tang all at once. So that is that entire recipe. But don't go anywhere <laughs> because uh, I'm gonna also show you my very favorite totally rule-breaking way to make steak so that we can eat all of this sauce. So this has been my favorite way to cook steak ever since I learned about it from Kenji Lopez-Alt at Serious Eats. It totally breaks all the rules that you think that you need to do with steak. You don't flip it just once, you flip it constantly. And that, you know, you would think that flipping it constantly you wouldn't get a really great crust, but actually you do, and it means that you get a more even cook through the middle. I will season my steak. And I'll give it a little pepper too. Some people say that the pepper burns if you put it on now, but I mean, I've never noticed that. Have you guys noticed that? No. So you can tell this pan is really hot because it's smoking, so it's time to go a little oil, not too much, because I also like to render a little bit of the fatty side first. Okay, this is the part I'm gonna start using my stopwatch and flipping. Woo! So instant read thermometer, best tool you can invest in. It will save your butt when you're cooking meat. My favorite way besides the instant read thermometer is to take something metal that will, you know, conduct heat, stick it in to, you know, the thickest part for a few seconds, and then hold it to your lip. And if it's warm, then it's probably medium rare and you're good. If it's cold, you need to keep cooking it. It's rare inside. If it's hot, then you probably overcooked your steak and you might want to use it for tacos or something else like that. We're gonna give this a shot. Okay, so the outer edge, medium, that's okay. Getting more medium rare as we go. Okay, there's our beautiful medium rare happening. Mmm. 
Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> mm, dang, I'm gonna eat a lot of steak. 